Okay, a quick little video on blood types. We'll talk about the main types of blood types, antigens present on the cells of those with particular blood types, antibodies present in the plasma of those with the main types of blood types. We'll talk about blood typing and how you detect the different blood types. If you have a particular blood type, who can you receive blood from? If you have a particular blood type, who can you donate blood to? And we'll extend a little bit and talk about if you have a particular blood type, who can you donate plasma to with the realization that you have antibodies against particular antigens in your plasma, so you can't donate plasma to just anyone. And you also cannot receive plasma from just anyone because you don't want to receive blood that has antibodies in it that would attack your blood cells. So let's come back over here and look at blood types. There's three main antigens present. These are things that the immune system can target. Now technically there's more than 30 antigens and even hundreds of more that also could be on blood types. But these particular antigens, the A, which I've depicted as a green triangle, the B antigen, which I've depicted as a B on a side, and the D antigen, which is also known as the positive and negative in a blood type, which I've also depicted as a D on the side. So again, there's multiple other antigens, but these are the main three antigens that cause a vigorous immune response, and these are the ones that have to be paid attention to when donating blood or when transfusing blood. If we go down the individual blood types, there's eight main types of blood type depending on the presence or absence of those antigens. So A positive has the A antigen and the D antigen. A negative has the A antigen and no other antigens. B positive has the B antigen and the D antigen. B negative has the B antigen. AB positive has the A antigen, the B antigen, and the D antigen. So AB positive people have all three antigens. AB negative has the A antigen and the B antigen. In O positive, it's lacking either of the A or the B antigens, and that's the designation of O when you're lacking A or B. In this case, we do have the D antigen, so this person would be O positive. Again, in the O negative, they're lacking the A antigen and the B antigen, hence the name O type blood. And they're also lacking the D antigen, so in O negative people, they lack all three antigens on the outside of the red blood cells. Now, if you have an antigen present on the outside of your red blood cell, you won't make antibodies against that because your immune system will detect that as self. However, you've probably been exposed to the other antigens, not necessarily by blood mixing or anything else, but these antigens are also found in bacteria and food items, so you probably have been exposed to these antigens before, and you've made antibodies to them, again, if your immune system hasn't detected them as self. So in this diagram, I'm depicting anti-A as a little triangle that fits over the A antigen, anti-B, and anti-D. Somebody that's A positive, again, would not have anti-A or anti-D because those would be detected by the immune system itself, but they would have been exposed to food or bacteria with the B antigen at some point, so they'd make the anti-B antibody. In the case of A negative, they'll make anti-B and anti-D. In the case of B positive, they'll have made the anti-A antigen. B negative makes anti-A and anti-D. AB positive has all three antigens, so all three are recognized as self, and the immune system will not make antibodies against any of them. AB negative won't make anti-A and anti-B because they're self, but will make anti-D. In O positive, anti-A and anti-B antibodies will be made, and in O negative, all three antibodies are made because the immune system doesn't detect any of the antigens as self because none of the antigens are on the outside of the red blood cell. A simple way to do blood typing then is to recognize that if you put anti-A antibody on a cell that has the A antigen, then that anti-A antibody is going to cause agglutination or it's going to cause the blood to basically clump up because that's what antibodies do when they find their targets. They cause them to clump together. So if you take anti-A antibody and put it on A positive blood, the antibody is going to find that antigen and cause the blood to agglutinate. Anti-B is not going to cause agglutination because the anti-B antibody cannot find the B antigen and cause the clumping. Anti-D antibody will find the D antigen and will cause agglutination. So in a person with A-positive blood, we'd expect anti-A to cause agglutination, anti-B to cause no clumping or no agglutination, and anti-D to cause agglutination. Now I won't go down through each of these, but hopefully you can go down through these and figure these out yourself. That for example, if we put on anti-A on someone that's B-negative, there's no A antigen, so there won't be any clumping. If we put on anti-B, it's going to find the B antigen and cause clumping or agglutination. And if we put on anti-D or the RH antibody, then it won't find clumping because there's no D antigen on the outside of that blood cell. Now let's then go up and talk about who can receive blood from whom. 
So if you're a particular blood type, like A positive, who can you receive blood from? Essentially what it comes down is you can receive blood from anyone who you do not have an antibody against. So in this case, someone with A positive blood will have anti-B antibodies, so they can receive blood from anyone that does not have the B antigen. That eliminates B positive, B negative, AB positive, and AB negative, and it leaves these four blood types, A positive, A negative, O positive, and O negative. Similarly, if somebody is A negative, they can receive blood from anyone that doesn't have the B antigen or the D antigen because they have antibodies against those. That eliminates everything except for A negative and O negative. Let's jump down here to AB positive. They can receive blood from anyone that does not have an antigen that they have an antibody against. They don't have any antibodies because all are recognized as self. So they can receive blood from anyone. That's why they're called the universal acceptor. Let's go through one more real quick. We'll do O negative. O negative, here are the antibodies they have. So they cannot receive blood from anyone with the A antigen, the B antigen, or the D antigen. That pretty much leaves everyone except for O negative. So people with O negative blood can only receive blood from other people that have O negative blood. Who can you donate to if you have a particular blood type? You can donate blood to anyone that does not have an antibody against what you have on your blood cell. So you could donate your A positive blood to anyone that does not have an anti-A antibody or an anti-D antibody. Now that eliminates most because most blood types are going to have either an anti-A antibody or an anti-D. In fact, the only ones that don't have one or the other is another A positive person or an AB positive. Everybody else has an antibody that will attack either the A antigen or the D antigen. So for example, A negative has the anti-D that would attack the D. B positive has the anti-A that would attack the A antigen. B negative has both antibodies that would attack both antigens. Again, the AB is someone that you could donate blood to. Anti-D cannot receive this blood because they have an antibody against the D antigen. O positive cannot receive this blood because they have the anti-A antigen. And O negative could not receive this blood because they have the anti-A antigen and the anti-D antigen. So again, you can donate blood to anyone that doesn't have an antibody against the antigen on the outside of your blood. Now one thing to point out here then is O negative is the universal donor because there aren't any antigens on the outside of their blood cell. So you don't have to worry about any of the antibodies the person could have. So you can give O negative to anyone and that's why O negative is called the universal donor. So before we wrap this up, let's extend one more little step and talk about who can donate plasma to whom and who can receive plasma from whom. When it comes to who can you donate plasma to, please realize that in that plasma there would be anti-B antibodies. And so you could not donate, if you have A positive blood, you could not donate your plasma to somebody that has the B antigen because the anti-B antibodies in your plasma would attack that B antigen. So what that eliminates is anything with the B antigen. So B positive, B negative, AB positive, and AB negative, leaving the A positive, A negative, O positive, and O negative. So essentially you can donate plasma to the same people you can receive blood from. Who can you receive plasma from? You can receive plasma from anyone that does not have an antibody that would attack one of your antigens. So if you're A positive blood, you can receive plasma from anyone that does not have antibody against your antigen. Now if you scan down through here though, you'll realize that most people would have those antibodies present, one or the other in their plasma. So A negative would have anti-D antibodies in their plasma. B positive would have anti-A. So essentially you're eliminating everyone except for A positive and AB positive. As before, when you could donate plasma to anyone you could receive blood from, you can receive plasma essentially from anyone you could donate blood to. The reason is you can receive plasma from anyone that doesn't have an antibody against your blood type. And that's the same thing, that's the same rule that governs whether you can donate blood to somebody. All right, so I've looked for a chart for a long, long time that had all of these things on there, and I'm hoping that this basically does that. The only thing that I've left off is the genetics of who can pass on their blood types to their kids. What are the possible outcomes of kids given the parents? But at least in this video, I've gone through the major types of blood types, antigens present, antibodies present, how you can read the various blood types, who can receive blood from whom, who can donate plasma to. Another thing that you don't often see, and I hopefully, hopefully it's helpful that we've extended it here, is who can donate plasma to who and who can receive plasma from whom. Thank you.